All right, let's do a video about op amps, okay? Uh, so I have a bunch of op amps here. We're going to be comparing op amps. So that's the, the not, we're not going to be designing circuits. We're going to be comparing uh, the performance of op amps. And we're going to be doing that using a very simple, uh, simple circuit here. It's just a uh, inverting amplifier, uh, 1K, 10K, so gain of 10. And it's inverting, so the input and the output are out of phase, right? 180 degrees out of phase. Um, so this is how we're going to test it. We're going to try different op amps. The, uh, uh, all of the op amps are going to be at uh, plus and minus 15. All right. And we will input using a function generator and we'll be looking at the input and output on a oscilloscope. All right. So uh, we will start with this op amp and let's take a look at what's going on here. So on the oscilloscope, you can see that we have channel two is the input, it's small, and the output is the yellow, it's big, all right? All right, so this video is also gonna be testing a new way of doing my videos. So let me know, let me know in the comments below what you think. Um, the Rigel oscilloscope can output HDMI and I can, do, I can send that through a frame grabber card and, and uh, capture that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the oscilloscope up in the upper right corner and uh, then film the rest of it with the oscilloscope up there. Let me know if you like that format or you'd rather have me pop back and forth or whatever. I don't know. So just let, let, me know what, let me know what you think. I think, I think it's going to be better. All right. So let me come back down over here. Keep that in frame. All right. So um, like I said, this is input and output. If I change the gain of channel 2 to 10 times more, and now it's a 200 millivolts per division, now they're matching uh, input to output. So yes, we do have a gain of 10, and they are out of phase because we have an inverting amplifier. All right. But we can invert channel 2 by pushing the button on the oscilloscope and say invert. Now they're both in phase. Okay. And okay, everything looks great. So we are using also the internal uh, generator in the oscilloscope. So we are generating a 10 kilohertz frequency. Let's go to 100 kilohertz frequency, 100 kilohertz. And zoom. Now we're running into problems. Now we have phase differences, right? Now we're introducing a phase shift um, with this particular op amp. Well, this op amp is a TL072, pretty modern op amp, I mean, not so modern, but I mean, modern than a lot of them. Um, and it's used everywhere. I mean, this, this is a very, very popular op amp. It's a FET input, you know, real, real nice specs on it and everything. Really good op amp. So that's what it does. It does have a frequency, a, a phase shift. Let's take a look at another op amp. All right. This one happens to be a JLC, JRC 4556. Okay. 4556. Let's pop that in there. A little bit better. A little bit better. Let's see here. A 4556 is the 70 milliamp uh, current one. It has a high, high drive output. Okay, that's what that op amp is. Let's try a different one. This is a JRC2068. A 2068 is a low noise amplifier. Okay, so it's, it's claim to fame is low noise. And look at that, it's got better phase noise, uh, phase information as well. It preserves phase better. All right, let's try a different one. This is the JRC4562. 4562. A 4562. I'm not sure what claim to fame 4562 has, but I know it's a good one. And it has about the same as the last one. A phase problem, it has about the same as the last one. All right, let's go to this one. This is a, ah, this is an oldie but goodie. Oops, <laughs> sorry. This is an old but goodie. This is an LM358. This has been around since the Stone Ages. Um, and uh, so you would expect this to be pretty poor, right? It's pretty, pretty old. Look at that. It's a beauty. <laughs> it's a winner. So. Even though op amps are old, don't discard them. Uh, this one happens to be pretty, pretty nice. Um, why is it good? Well, I don't know. I have some theories, but we're going to hold off here. The last op amp we're going to be taking a look at is a any. This is an any five five three two. Also JRC five five three two. The five five three two is everywhere. It's a very popular op amp in Audio Land. Should I use the word? Should I? 
Should I? Ubiquitous? All right, let's put it in. Oh, I got it in crooked. Ah, its leads are a little wide. There we go, look at that. So of all the op amps we've tested today, this one has the best phase um, retention. Um, so why, why is this? Well, a lot of those JRC op amps are kind of old school designs. They are, they are bipolar designs and they're meant to do what they're meant to do and nothing else. And so they've made certain, you know, compromises in certain places to get other things better. Um, a lot of people say, you know, in really high end equipment, you design your own op amps and you can always design a better op amp for a particular purpose if you're allowed to. Um, otherwise, you need to use something off the shelf and you can pick better parts. So why is phase uh, such an such an interesting thing? You know, why would uh, why would you care about phase? Well, you might care about phase because of you're going to reproduce high high uh, frequencies and stuff. But if you think about just regular music, if you have an impulse response, a drum or, you know, just a, a, a pluck of a string. Everything is like, has edges. Everything has sharp edges, right? And you hit a piano, it's a percussive instrument, right? It, it makes it a very sharp transient. What is that? Well, that's, a, that's like a square wave. And edges have very, very high frequency contents, right? Even though it might be 100, 100 hertz tone on a piano, the initial edge is very, very sharp and has very high frequencies in it to get that information out. And if you smear that information by altering the phase at high frequencies and have different phase at low frequencies, you can kind of smear things and make things sound a little bit muddy. Um, so yeah, phase information can be very, can be very uh, critical in applications. Um, I don't know for sure. I think it's one of the reasons that class D amplifiers are so hard to design um, is getting the phase information perfectly good. It requires a lot of engineering. The class AB amplifiers kind of do it uh, just by default. So. Anyway, there you go. Uh, op amps have to worry about uh, phase, and you can choose better ones. You can choose worse ones. Anyway, yeah, thanks.